verse 17. And take the helmet of salvation. The helmet of salvation. The Roman soldier's helmet protected his head. And, and it's the, the Greek word uh, uh, soteria, which means deliverance or victory. So the helmet of victory, the helmet of salvation, of victory, of deliverance. Paul is probably referring to the renewed mind that thinks continuously in harmony with God's word and acknowledges the victory of Jesus Christ over Satan. I want to say that again. The helmet of salvation, it fitted down over the Roman soldier's head and it protected his head, protected his brain, protected his whole cranial area. What is the metaphorical truth that Paul wants to communicate here? It has something to do with the head, the mind. I believe, and I'll say this again, have it written down here. I believe Paul is referring to the renewed mind. You know, uh, Romans 12, 2. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Be transformed. And so, I believe this helmet, we put it on, it's this renewed mind that thinks continuously in harmony with God's Word. Don't let Satan get you off of God's Word. Stay with God's Word. It's a renewed mind that thinks continuously in harmony with God's Word and acknowledges the victory of Jesus Christ over Satan. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. We must control our thoughts. Romans chapter 8, I think it's around verses 4 and 5, says to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded, in other words, to think in harmony with God, with His truth, with His Word, is life and peace. The big battle is in the mind. And so we must passage in 2 Corinthians chapter 10 around verse 5. Paul says, though we walk in the flesh, though we walk in a physical body, we do not, he says, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, they're not physical, but they're mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Casting down imaginations. The word imaginations, it literally means, is a word that means reasonings. Casting down. It comes, uh, casting down imaginations it comes from the, the Greek word logos, which is a, a belief system. Casting down belief systems, reasonings. And every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. And bringing every thought into obedience to Christ. Do not give your mind the leisure of thinking outside of God's Word. I'll say that again. Do not allow your mind the benefit, the leisure, and sometimes even the pleasure of thinking outside of God's Word. Paul said, bring every thought into captivity unto obedience of Christ to Christ. Don't allow your don't allow your mind to think outside of what is good and what is acceptable. As Paul said to the Philippians, whatever is good, whatever is true, whatever is of good report, think on these things. Bring every thought into captivity to Christ. The battle, the big battle, is in the mind. Word control. control your thinking. Control your thinking. Absolutely. Control your own mind. Control your thinking. Do not allow your mind to be controlled by outside stimuli. Don't allow your mind to be controlled by circumstances. Or by negative emotions or what people say. You take control of your mind. Hallelujah. Take control of your mind. Bring every thought into, kept, in, in, into obedience. Bring every thought captive into obedience to Christ. You be the, the controller of your mind. You decide how you're going to think. Richard says it's the overall thought life. 
The overall thought life. Good, good expression, Richard. Very good. Helmet of salvation. Get it on. Get that, get that mind covered. Get your mind covered. Get your mind covered. Hallelujah. Take those thoughts captive. And the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. The sword of the Spirit. Now this is the one of offensive weapon in all of this. This is the one offensive weapon, the sword of the Spirit. The others are defensive weapons. Catching those fiery darts and those arrows that Satan tries to shoot at us. This is the one weapon by which we go on the offensive. The sword, the, the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Or in other words, the sword of the Spirit, the sword that the Spirit uses. What sword does the Spirit use? It's the sword of the Spirit. The sword that the Spirit used. What sword does He use? The Word of God. Now the word word here is a translation of the Greek word rhema. There's also the logos of God, which is translated Word of God, and then there's the rhema. That is also translated Word of God. What is the difference? Well, Logos is like a complete message. The Logos would be like the entire Bible. Rhema is more a specific word. A special word for a special situation. A, a particular word for a particular situation. And so, what Paul is saying is that the sword that the Spirit uses is the rhema of God. It's the Word of God that is appropriate to that particular situation, whatever it might be. It's the applied Word. The applied Word, G, uh, Sue says. And the applied Word, you see, the Holy Spirit, one thing He will do, as we fill our hearts and minds with the Logos, then in specific situations in life, the Holy Spirit will, will, out of that Logos, He will bring forth a rhema for each situation. When Jesus was in the wilderness, and He said, it is written, He was speaking a rhema. Each one was drawn from the Logos, each one was drawn from the Scripture, but only certain Scriptures were applicable in that situation. And interesting, Jesus said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every rhema that proceeds from the mouth of God. Now, I dare say that you, and I believe this will happen, as you, if, you, if you're a, a follower of Jesus and you're walking with Him, in your life, God will give you special words for your life. Special rhemas. Special words just for you and for your life. I know... God has given me, God has given Sue and I particular words that He gave for us for our life together. They're out of the Logos, but we know that in a special way they are particular words for us in our life, our life situation. And so, I speak, <laughs> I speak those words, those rhemas. Probably there, I speak them every day in prayer. I will speak those words that God gave us. Some of them gave us many years ago. But I take those. Now, they are, it's the sword the Spirit uses, but it tells us to take it. So how do we take it? Well, we have to take it by putting it in our mouth and speaking it. That's the only way we can take the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, the reign of God, we take it by putting it in our mouth and speaking it. And when we do that, then it says it becomes the sword that the Spirit uses against Satan. When you think about that for a moment, when you take God's Word, God's applied Word for your situation, you put it in your mouth and you speak it, it becomes what the Holy Spirit uses as a sword going on the offensive against Satan. 